Yo, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another deck profile. This time we're going over Brad Brown's fourth place Toa deck. So this is gonna be updated with the new draft box cards. He did get fourth place with it, so excellent finish. We're gonna talk about his notes a little bit. We're gonna talk about the deck profile. Before we do, guys, though, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with awesome Dragon Ball Super content that I post here. If you're looking for a Dragon Ball Super community to get plugged in with, make sure you check out the Discord in the description below. Excellent, helpful group of people. If you guys want to help support the channel or get caught up on some competitive content, now that we are in regional season heading towards Nats, make sure to check out the Patreon in the description below. Really helps the channel out a lot, and you guys get a lot of competitive content. And finally, guys, if you want to... Uh, build the deck you see on screen here or build any uh, buy any of the cards I talk about make sure to use my link to TCG player in the description below all this really helps channel out a lot guys I really appreciate every single one of you with that being said we'll get into this so Brad Brown played Toa at the Texas LCQ got fourth place with it after Swiss again there was no top cut playoff but we've got some notes from him from the event so we're gonna talk about it we've got uh, Brad Brown saying the Perunga ramp matchup was kind of scary he won the die roll. I guess first I should go over his uh, his standings. So round one, Parunga Ramp 2-0 win. Round two, uh, Guy Nemba 2-1 loss. Round three, Broly Height 2-1 win. Round four, Toa Mirror 2-0 win. Round five, Pan 2-0 win. Round six, Toa Mirror 2-0 win. So he won a few mirror matches. He did win the Parunga matchup, which you said was scary. And the only loss he took on the day was to Guy Nemba, which Janemba, the green, blue, yellow variant, the pretty pretty much the reason that was adopted was in part to beat Toa. Toa is a very rough matchup for that deck, but with the introduction of green and Vegeta the Cruel, uh, that matchup becomes very tough for Toa. So let's read Brad's notes. The Parunga ramp matchup was kind of scary. I won the die roll and he didn't see objection, so I was able to just aggro him to death before he could get to seven energy. Game two, I sided all three force objection mass sand and stripped him of two energy turn three and then i was able to keep him from seven energy the whole game if you can keep them from seven energy that's definitely going to seal the deal you know force suggestion mass saiyan is a great sideboard card for that matchup i can definitely see that uh guy Nemba felt kind of unwinnable to me i made all the right plays baited the counter plays held on my vegeta so i could play two in a turn and then at least get one proc but he never let them stick for more than a turn yeah and janemba the, the guy Nemba variant Specifically, they're going to play the Vegeta the Cruels. Uh, they also sideboard the Sun Goten Family Justice because it's another green charge for them. They also can just use it to quickly pick off the time regulators. And that's if uh, if Toa can't get time regulator established against Guy Nemba, that's going to be really, really crucial and uh, probably going to lead to them taking an L. So the rest of it, we've got uh, Broly Head of Mastery was scary. A lot of scary matchups so far. Uh, game one, him with Victory Strike. That's pretty much going to seal the deal against Toa because you obviously can't God Strike the Victory Strike. Um, game one hit me with victory strike game two I sent his path of greatness to the warp so with the leader you can remove the barrier and then warp it with like dimensional manager foo or mass sand things like that game three he misplayed and swung with his leader while path was on board so I took away swap and then ripped his hand the next turn and he scooped that's pretty excellent that's pretty busted that's a great way to capitalize on an opponent's misplay a lot of people may not see that you know take the opportunity to god strike an important skill like swap so very good on Brad's part the two Toa mirrors weren't very difficult. They kept attacking me and playing their cards while also comboing to keep a high life total. Yeah, so uh, at, at to a point, they're giving Brad cards and they're also um, negging cards from their hand to stay at high life. So um, that definitely seems like a uh, recipe for disaster in the Toa mirror match. So again, way to capitalize on that. So he says he just kept most of his overall cards and only comboed with the four star ball um, once they ripped my hand and I still have like five, six cards in hand and I can usually strip them down to zero. Then you just crit them to death and you hope they don't draw into something that could rip your hand, lol. <laughs> uh, the pan matchup was pretty easy too. You just play around the counters that neg you and then take them down to zero cards and go ham. I imagine that like chains and up can sometimes be a little bit tough to play around, but um, staying at a high life total, like staying around like six life, and if you can manage to get them to like four or less, that's definitely going to help out a lot. The new SS3 trunks was great for a turn one to two attack, or if you needed a surprise double strike at the end of the game. Most players predict an overwhelm double strike, so they prepare for that, but they never saw the trunks coming. And the new mirror was great for being able to go all in and then having energy for defense. Definitely agree. I actually played Toa tonight at Locals at the night the night I'm recording this video, and uh, that card is, was just stellar. Uh, I can talk about it a little bit later once we get to the deck profile, but um, I feel like the deck is in a very strong place. I might tweak the side a little bit, but overall, I was very pleased with how it performed. Um, 
yeah so that's the deck profile guys uh sorry the notes for the deck profile brad's notes very very well detailed i appreciate how um how we lined it out and uh you guys can't see it but he gave me a very good clean thing to read so with that being said we'll go over the list toa excellent in the format still has a good a good shot against a lot of shenron decks but shenron and Perunga ramp that like I, i've said it a million times like that deck has evolved to beat toa um toa is really good at dealing with one big boss monster per turn so shenron Perunga ramp dropping multiple of those per turn uh it can be a little bit rough but the four suggestion in the sideboard definitely is a great sideboard tech for that and then yeah guy number same thing like had to evolve to beat toa before these were both favorable matchups for toa but now um toa is kind of on the back end but i think the draft box really helped it out a lot so getting into the main we got the we got the skillless engine with three kid gokus and two four star balls a lot of lists that i looked at especially from like uh, san diego for instance they are you know really adopting the skillless engine that jordan markle won philly with i'm still not like super huge fan of it i mean i think um i i like the hard draw of things like dende and kami things like that but i mean it is it is an engine that works i also think it's kind of interesting to see no skillless trunks in here but uh, i think it's really just a card advantage you know like once you're on the back side of the leader you put four star balls back into your drop area and then you pick them up with a kid goku it's kind of like a free plus so that's really good supreme kai of time uh, of time kai disruptor uh two of a floodgate against two drop or less attackers i wonder where this was most relevant against like probably pan i would imagine this is a really good card against things like skillless but skillless isn't too popular right now but nonetheless at the worst case scenario it's a draw one so uh, in my build for instance like the kid gokus and, and the uh, supreme kais those are like dendes and, and kami's things like that and then we have the uh four vegeta time regulator three dark absorption mira uh three absorption mira seems like the right number i know a lot of people bounce between two and three but three seems like the right number especially when you add in the new mira from the draft box um it just you know you're always gonna have a mirror in the warp or in the hand at some point so having that extra union absorb is huge the four relentless destruction mira the two ss3 tag team trunks the locals i played tonight i played three of it the card actually performed very very well so i definitely agree with brad that the card is really really good really sleeper pick i mean probably not sleeper because it's really high price right now a lot of people realize it's probably a card you know worth picking up but I definitely agree. I think the card is very, very strong in Toa. Moving on, we got the two Trunks Time Regulator. I, I like this a lot, actually. Uh, the card I don't play it in my build personally, but the card draw is really good. Putting a card in your warp as well, it can be really relevant. Like sometimes you have a Toa just sitting in your hand when you need it in the warp, and Trunks gets it there for you without having to like you know needlessly neg. So that's really good. Uh, I agree with the Toa lineup definitely. Three three is really good. Uh, three D Banisher Foo. People bounce around between three and four. He plays the one Mass Sand in the main deck, which is good against like U six. Good against Skillis things of that nature the four mira self-reformation definitely need that at four of now the um seven typical creator absorbed and the seven assault uh the two assault from the skies so in the build i played tonight at my local actually i played four assault from the sky and it was super good like it was just in my opinion it was like a card that you don't mind searching with the leader because it's a 5k it's a good energy this and that you don't really always want to add mirror creator absorbed from your hand uh, from your deck to your hand when you use your leader effect to search but the assault from the sky is not bad to add and obviously you can overwhelm it out later seven is a little tough for toa to get to but like when you play a lot of cantrips like you know time disruptor the skillless goku or like kami dende things like that you have combo fodder and a lot of times you do want to sit at like six five you know four life as long as you can and not go much below that so you're gonna have seven and drop more often than not like i found myself actually dropping the seven drop mira a lot of the time and it's really good because you go like uh you know mira assault from the skies um on turn four you tap an energy for it you awaken with the leader then you do your whole unit absorb play and that sets you up really nicely because you're getting energy back on your opponent's turn for defense you probably gave the assault from the skies crit which is really really pressuring if they don't have the negate 30k double strike crit is huge and um yeah it's really really good i'm actually gonna get you guys recorded gameplay i think from uh from the locals that i played tonight with toa uh, against some really headed mastery but we'll keep going nonetheless the uh, four super combos four power burst and the two four star ball so that's gonna round out brad's 50 and then we'll go to the sideboard unexpected turn uh really good uh, it's one of the only counter plays that toa can really play because it is a black leader doesn't play any multicolor cards things like that so good against the u6 matchup it's kind of awkward to use against u6 though like they have to have a board full of weenies to really get max value out of it but they also have to have like a lot of twos and hires so it's a weird card i'm kami might be better in the spot you know kami is less energy efficient but kami might be live more of the time i'd be very interested to know um what brad thought about unexpected turn Dark Power, Black Mass Sand, another great card against U6, against like Pan with Familial Bonds, Chain Zeno, things like that. Remote Serious Bomb, I'm curious why he cited this. Maybe for Green Broly? Um, I can imagine it's like a 
sort of tough matchup for this deck because it is very aggressive although you do have the d banisher foos for removal so i am actually curious why he cited that the third supreme kai of time time disruptor for more aggro hate vegeta making an entrance i do wonder how helpful this was against janemba they don't have like too many i mean they, they actually do run like eight negates for the most part uh four bojacks four dimension magics so i wonder if this actually did help him um you know prevent getting milled out where vegeta couldn't necessarily fill that spot that that was probably a very good sideboard the fourth dark absorption mira i imagine where he wanted that in or i'm curious rather then the three uh four rejection mass sand excellent against the shenron ramp matchup like we talked about and then mass sand the mysterious warrior coming in to clean up wide boards so overall really good list you know i can't knock the skillless engine i'm not a personal fan of it but it's definitely putting up results so um definitely something to look at something to consider playing for sure see how you like it um overall i think the list is really good brad congratulations again for getting fourth place man thank you for sending me the information guys hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you next time